On today's episode, I want to go over my workflow for using Gigapixel AI when you uh, aggressively crop your images. What is the best workflow for that? Stay tuned and find out. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. So today I'm going to show you my best workflow for working with Gigapixel AI when you really want to crop into your images. Now, I'm starting out in Lightroom today, and this is generally the way I do things. I always like to start out in Lightroom. So far in this image, I've made some basic adjustments, as you can see right here. Now, if I go to detail, you'll notice I have no sharpening. The only thing I use is color noise reduction. I leave it at the default setting for Lightroom. I find I get the best results when I do it that way. The other thing I've done is under lens corrections, I have my remove chromatic aberrations checked on and my enable profile corrections checked. I do that for all of my images. The next step for me now is to either denoise or sharpen my image. This is important. Do not crop your image first. Do your denoising and you're sharpening on an entire full-size image file. To me, that is very important, or you won't get uh, satisfactory results. And I've tried it both ways, and I'm telling you, I'm speaking from experience, you will get the best results if you do your denoising and sharpening before you ever go into Gigapixel AI. However, if you have an image that is relatively sharp, like this particular image is not. It's a little on the soft side. But if your image is sharp to begin with and it has really low noise from your camera because you shot at a low ISO, you could go right into Gigapixel and do your cropping right there. You can skip the whole denoising and sharpening step because deno or Gigapixel will give you adequate denoising and sharpening, okay? This image, however, suffers from a sharpening issue. It's a little bit soft, so I need to use uh, Sharpen AI. We can see the ISO was 320 and at this ISO level I'll have very low noise so I can just get away with uh, Sharpen AI for denoising and sharpening. I placed a note up on the screen. You may want to pause this video and read this note. Uh, this is my recommendation for using Sharpen AI, denoise AI or both. And I have one more note that I'm going to place up on the screen. Read it and it's my reasoning for not using uh, Sharpen AI or Denoise AI as a batch processor processing raw files. It's very important, so pause and read my note. If you're interested in seeing some examples of what I just explained in my note, I'd be happy to show you that in a tutorial if I get enough people wanting me to do that. So please let me know about that in the comment section below. I apologize for taking this extra time at the beginning of this tutorial, but I'm not really because I really want you to understand why I do the things I do in my workflow. In case you forgot what I was doing, I almost forgot what I was doing, and that is I want to take this image here, which is slightly out of focus. I need to sharpen it and sharpen AI. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring it back into Lightroom and then send it off to Gigapixel for some cropping because I'm going to crop in pretty tight on it. So let's go ahead and send this into Topaz Sharpen AI. I'm going to right click on my image and go to Edit In, uh, Sharpen AI. Now I can only send this out as a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Remember, it's a raw file. I'm going to send it out as a TIFF file. Now I have choices here. I could send it as a TIFF, uh, JPEG, or a PSD, but I want TIFF. Remember, that's a lossless file. I'm going to use Profoto, the highest color space, because that's just what I use. 16 bits for the bit depth. I'm going to do a resolution of 300, uh, compression of none. I'll go ahead and click edit, and that'll send us into Topaz Sharpen AI. I'm going to move quickly in Sharpen AI because I already have a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel showing how to use Sharpen AI. Now in the auto mode, it tells me too soft is what I should use. But I find if I go to motion blur and give it a second here to render itself out, render out the preview here, it takes a second or two for it to render out. Now if I zoomed in a little tighter, it would be a little bit quicker for me. And this uh, varies from uh, computer to computer. But yeah, that looks a lot sharper with the, um, with the motion blur setting here. And I've tried the out of focus before, but the motion blur gives me the best results. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. And uh, let's zoom in a little bit tighter. And I'll show you, when I zoom into like 200%, watch, it'll, it'll render out that preview a lot quicker. And as you can see, my noise is gone. My image is sharp. Let me just drag this over. It'll render it out again. And yeah, that looks really good. I'm happy with that. All I have to do now is click apply and we'll be sent right back into Lightroom. 
And here we are back in Lightroom. I paused the video when I brought it back into Lightroom. It took like 15 seconds to process out. Now let me go ahead and select both of these images and we'll do a little pixel peeping here. I'm gonna click on XY comparison. I'm in the library module here. Let's zoom in. The image on the left is the sharpened image with Sharpen AI. The image on the right is the original. But as you can clearly see here, that image on the left is super sharp. I'm zoomed into 300%, but look how sharp and there's no noise whatsoever in the image. Now remember, the image started out at ISO 320, so I had no need to send this into uh, Denoise AI. All right, so let me go ahead and go back to a single image view, and we'll see the full frame here. Now I'm gonna send this into Gigapixel AI, and I'll do the cropping in Gigapixel AI. This is the way I like to do it. I like to do the cropping right in Gigapixel. Now we need to send the full size TIFF image into Gigapixel AI. So right now they're both selected. So I'm gonna command or control click the uh, DNG raw file and I'm only going to be sending in the TIFF file which has the sharpening applied to it from Sharpen AI. So I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna go to edit in and I'm gonna go to Gigapixel AI. And now I have choices here. I could send it in as a copy with Lightroom adjustments as a copy, edit as a copy, or edit the original. In this case, I want to edit the original because I've already denoised it and sharpened it. And just to save space on my computer, I'm going to send it in as the original. Okay, because remember, I still have the original RAW file. So I'm going to send in this TIFF file as an original. That'll save up a little space. So I don't have to do anything as far as settings here. I just have to click Edit. It'll open up Gigapixel AI, and we'll get started. By the way, at the time I'm making this video, the latest version is 5.5.2. So if you don't have that version, go ahead and download that one, okay? So I'm in the side-by-side uh, -side view right here, and I'm just going to use the standard AI model for now. And so let's see. Let's go to Crop. We're going to go ahead and crop the image. I'm going to keep the original aspect ratio, the original ratio. And I'm going to crop pretty darn tight on this image. And Gigapixel does a great job at upsizing it, upscaling the image. And I think a crop right around there looks pretty sweet, I think. I think that's good. I'm happy with that. All I need to do is click Apply. That'll apply the crop. Give it a few seconds here to render out. At the smaller size, it takes a little bit longer, but it's really, really quick. Now it has to process here. Wait for it. It is almost done. But there we go. So the image on the left is the original and the image on the right is the Gigapixel preview and it cropped down to 2585 by 1723. Up converted twice, it's up to a 5170 by 3446 pixels. So let's uh, bump that up to a 4X. I just want to go a little bigger. This would actually be a little larger, well, a good bit larger than my original uh, camera uh, pixel count. Okay, and as you can see, the image on the left, again, is the original the image. On the right is the preview with Gigapixel. It is super sharp, and the preview renders out really quick, and that's at 37%. And the only thing I need to do is decide, do I need any extra noise reduction? I might just pull that back a little bit, because remember, it already had noise removal from... Um, Sharpen AI and uh, remove blur. I'm just going to pull that back as well because I don't think I need to have it quite as sharp because it's already been sharpened with Sharpen AI. I think standard is going to be fine, so I'm not going to play around with any of these other um, models. Standard is going to be great, and I generally use standard, I'll be honest with you. But I always tell you, look around your image, and I've already done this. I've looked around my image just to make sure there's no weird things going on in the image, like some weird kind of an artifact or something that's happening. But just go around and say, you know, just look at it. Just assure yourself that everything is good and everything looks good to me. So once you're satisfied with it, go ahead and click apply. And that'll send you right back into Lightroom. I'm just letting this run in real time so you see how long this takes. And it's going to take roughly like 15 seconds. Now, right after this, there's a little, I think there's a little bug here. So stay tuned and I'll explain what I mean by that. After the image is done processing, uh, Gigapixel was not quitting itself. So you'll notice when I go back to Lightroom, my image is not there yet. So all you need to do is, after Gigapixel is done, if you're experiencing this problem, which I think it's a bug, if you're listening, Topaz, let us know if this is a bug and fix it. If it is, I just click on Quit Gigapixel, 
and then I'll be sent right back into Lightroom with my process image from Gigapixel. And as you can see now my image is cropped but it's uh, 10,340 pixels by 6892 pixels actually bigger than the original file was because the original file was 5616 by 3744. Now, I didn't have to make it that large, but that's just the size I made it. Up on the screen right now, I have my Gigapixel AI best workflow for cropping images notes for you. So you may want to pause the video, read through those notes. And I find this is the best workflow that I've come up with thus far. Well, there it is, everyone. That's my Lightroom Gigapixel AI best workflow for cropping images. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.